ponytails. Read by Scribbler. Over here, there's a room available. Come on, follow me. Roll the gurney in. Sweet Celestia, this isn't pretty. I can't even imagine. Let me take the vital signs. Just a sec. Look! Hey, are you awake? Good. That's it. Take it easy. You're in the hospital. Just be still and let me work. Do you know what happened? Don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. You're here at the Ponyville Hospital now. We're the best medical service in the area. You're in good care. There's some blood, but don't worry. We'll get you cleaned up. <laughs> yes, I do get asked that a lot. It's not easy to keep a white coat clean. I'm gonna get you cleaned up a little and take care of a few of your injuries so that nothing gets worse. I'm gonna need to touch this. The disinfectant is gonna sting a little. Just a little. If you want, we can talk while I work. I'm sure it would help you take your mind off it. What's your name? My name's Redheart. Sorry to meet you under these circumstances. I don't think any pony ever really wants to come to the hospital. I'll do whatever I can to help you. Just hold still for a little longer. Okay, I've got everything checked out and we need to get the blood stopped. This tourniquet is gonna feel tight. It has to be to do its job. No, don't look. Lay back and relax. Sorry. The ceiling is a little boring. Nothing to look at. Over in the full ward, we have some stuffed animals hanging up. I think the lights over there are a little different too. These are bright, aren't they? And there. Sorry, it has to be this tight. We can take it off a little later. Okay, that's taken care of. Let me move the blanket a little. Next up is... This. Don't, oh, no, don't worry, I'm sure it looks worse to you. Just look at the ceiling. This is gonna take a little bit more work. Doctor, I'll have to go get him. Now let me finish looking you over. Do you have any other injuries? Can you feel everything? I can see some scrapes and bruises here and there. That's minor. I'm sure you had stuff like that when you were a kid. What did you like to do when you were younger? Oh? Yes, I suppose I've always been doing this kind of thing. I've taken care of a lot of ponies. I don't like seeing others in pain. Okay, before I go, tip your head a little toward me. I need to make a few marks so every pony else will know what to do. We're a little busy at the moment, and another nurse might have to see you. No, don't worry, it'll wash off. We'll catch up with a paper chart later. There. Is this pillow fine? Just lay back and relax a little. Don't fall asleep, though. I'll be back in just a moment with the doctor. Hi! How have you been? Oh! I see. Red Heart went to get one of the doctors. Let me see. Oh my. Oh no, don't worry. If Red Heart said it wasn't that bad, she was probably right. The hospital is the best medical service in the area, you know. We take care of things like this all the time. Well no, not this many at once, usually. But it isn't anything we can't handle. We've got all the specialists. Oh, I see you're coming back. You take care now. Thanks for checking, sweets. I went to get the doctor. Hey, hello again. I brought Dr. Stable. He's the best trauma surgeon in Ponyville. 
Yeah, yeah, we do say that we're best a lot. You'd want to have the best, right? Thank you, nurse. Well, I'll certainly do my best for any patient. Let me have a look. Here, doctor. I see. Hmm. I knew some pony once who was named something similar. Oh? No, nothing like that. I doubt you'll ever meet them. Could you move just a little? I'd like to see how this looks. Don't strain. I can understand how all of this could make you a little weak. Nurse, take the other side. Just a little bit to straighten things out. There, that's it. All right. Hmm. How bad? Well, you've done fine for the last few minutes. We'll get you to surgery soon enough. I'll have Nurse Redheart check on you. I have a few others to see. Take care, okay? Don't worry. He'll be back. Like you said, you've been doing fine so far. We just have a few things to take care of before we can get you into surgery and healing spells applied. Yeah, the hospital is a little busy right now. Let me close the door a little. Maybe it'll be quieter. Are you doing okay? I can give you something for the pain if you want. Here we go. It'll be just a little pinch, and after that, you'll feel better. Okay. You should start to feel it. I just didn't want to see you hurting. What? Sure, ask me anything. Uh, uh, oh. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you. I may have to take you up on that. I, I have a few things to check on. And I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Are you still doing okay? I'm going to be back to check on you. It'll just be a few minutes. <laughs> Don't worry. Relax. That was Tornike. It was written by Totally Not a Brony and read by Scribbler with special guest VAs Corazon as Nurse Sweetheart and Goombasa as Dr. Stable. Thank you very much for listening. This fic reading is late, 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 and I have no good reason except for the major one that seems to be the reason all the time now. <sighs> Work. There's no other way of putting it, it's just that I. My working hours have gone up an extraordinary amount since Christmas, um, and judging by several conversations I had today, they are due to go up again. Um, so I, I really wanted to get this fic reading out. Uh, the fact that I had it already edited, I've had this one edited for a while, I desperately wanted to get it out at the weekend, but I seem to spend a lot of time sleeping at the weekend because I sleep so very little during the week, as evidenced by the fact that last night I also tried to record this end blurb and fell asleep for two hours at my study table. When I woke up, it was close to 3am and I hadn't planned for the next day at work and I had to do that. All things take their own precedent over time. Precedent. Precedent, not president. We don't take the president. That's illegal. Um, and so, here it goes on, on a weekday. At this time, I am recording this on a Tuesday night, Tuesday the 26th. Which day actually goes out, I'm hoping, for Wednesday? Maybe Thursday? We'll see. I also have another one or two videos scheduled for this week. Um, one of which is a heroic fanfic review, which we haven't seen one of those in several months. And this time we are reviewing uh, The Incandescent Brilliance by Kitsune Risu. And uh, it is Ilya Leonov's choice because he did a reading of it. And so when we rolled the dice and it came up with his number, he chose this one. So this, either Thursday or Friday. I'm great with deadlines. I am all deadlines, all best, all me. Uh, it will be at the end of this week. And there will be another thick reading this weekend, and I know there will, because I've already edited it, and I'm going to record the end blurb sometime. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, this week, I am going to be showing off some fan art that I've received, and 
I, I don't know how many other ways there are to, to say how grateful I am without it coming off as trite and boring and, and derivative and repetitious and other synonym. And, and, but it needs to be said every time because whenever anybody sends me any fan art, I'm, I'm so pleased as punch every single bloody time. Y you can't construe how grateful I am. Really, you can't because... I'm a lonely sad sack IRL. I, I don't go out. I don't have that many people I see in real life. They tend to all be work colleagues that I see at work. Um, therefore, my online life is, is very, very important to me. And the fact that people send me these things and say they, and they do it because they say they appreciate what I do, these reading silly little stories, it's amazing to me and it will continue to be amazing. And these people I'm about to mention continue to be amazing. And the first one is this one. This was drawn by The Fangirl, whom, many of you may know, was the voice of Applejack in my Christmas special The Homesteading. And she's actually as the Applejack in No Place Like Home as well, which will be coming out, because I've now recruited another editor to help me. And, um, Fangirl, I had no idea she was such an accomplished artist as this. I know that she does art for uh, Sherlock Hooves, which I am actually playing a character in their newest episode. <laughs> but, um, she, she sent me this just after Christmas, and it's got to be one of the nicest, most stylized, but prettiest uh, piece of fan art of my OC I've ever seen. I love the way that she's drawn the eyes. They're vaguely anime-esque, but also her completely her own style. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Fangirl. And then we have this one. This is Happy Birthday Scribbler. And it was by Mario King 89 aka Quill and Lead. And he drew this one for my birthday. And it was... Uh, me and Reverb having a bit of a smooch under some mistletoe. Which, at the end of January, doesn't seem that topical, but at the time, it was incredibly so, because my birthday was on the 15th of December. So just ten days before Christmas. And, yeah, smoochy smoochy poo. Thank you very much, Quill. I see you there in the corner. <laughs> and then there's this one. This is a piece of fan art I received from Mandy Chan, who was in Dawn on the Mountainside, where she played the element of kindness, I believe it was. And she's drawn this one of my birthday cake and my OC and her OC. And thank you, Mandy Chan. It's pretty. And this one. This was another birthday gift that I received from Transmute. And Transmute uh, is a very accomplished artist and he's got a very much his own distinctive style. And I would be remiss. I said I was only been looking at four pieces of fan art. But I would be totally and utterly remiss to not show Transmute's other recent piece of art of me. And it's this one. For anybody who knows Xena... Uh, he is an um, MLP artist and Twitterer and general <sighs> perverted pwn with whom I am friends in real life. And um, during Christmas, when Reverb was here, uh, Xena uh, doesn't live that far outside of mainstream London. Mainstream? No, main London. I don't know. He doesn't live outside London. Leave us? Oh, fuck it. Whatever. Uh, he doesn't live far from where we were staying and he he trained himself in. Trained him? Oh, fuck it. I'm tired, I want sleep. He got the train in and came and saw us and throughout the video he was making lots and lots of lewd comments and half of the lewd comments he made weren't even recorded because he didn't have the camera out at that point. But he was progressively becoming more and more aggravated throughout the day. Lovably aggravating, but it did get to the point where I was trying to kick him in the balls. And kind of succeeded, I got his hip. Which is on film, I actually did make contact. There were many other times where I was trying to, to hit and kick him and he kept running away, bastard. So this this art characterises my relationship with Xena, because the other thing Xena is famous for, or infamous for, I should say, is whenever we get together IRL, he nicks my Twitter and tries to post as me. And people can always tell, because then I come on as myself afterwards and yell at him in all caps. And this is what Transmute has drawn here. Me losing my shit at Xena, and Xena totally unbothered because he reigns supreme in terms of pranking me. Thank you very much, all you artists, because it, it's amazing to get this, and ah, uh, I have no words. Interestingly, in terms of art, something that came out this week, the narrator calendar. This was a surprise to me, that the fic readers, spearheaded by Thornquill and his lovely wife Amaki, made this, a 12-month downloadable PDF calendar in the style of Calendar Girls and Chippendales calendars, featuring custom artwork and slogans 
from all the famous fic readers in our fic reader chat. And to be perfectly honest, I had no idea this was being made. They showed it to me after it was done. It is fucking amazing. Uh, I've already made uh, an advert for... Well, I haven't made the advert. I, I downloaded the advert they'd made and uploaded it. Just put a, a link in the description bit on the end. But there is a link in this description too. Because go and get it. It's amazing. It features such pretty custom artwork from Amaki. She's such an accomplished artist. And it's hilarious. Perverted in more than a little way. But hilarious. Idiotly enough, is a foxy grandpa. I love it. <sighs> right, okay, this this envelope is becoming as long as the fic itself. So, thank you very much again to my wonderful patrons. Red Tiger, Matthew Byers, The Autistic Pony, Limey Pony, Ian Jensen, Shining Tevos Star, Marcus, Stephen Knight, Mystic Mystery, Andrew, Quill and Lead, Xena, uh. Mad Curse, Starlight Stream, Ask Nightmare Luna, Ilya Leonov, Norman, no man, Thought Police and Spies, Cody Mathers, Box Monster, Warrior of Virtue, Greg F., Ed Arthur, Sturdy Solus, and the One Ryu. Thank you very much, everyone. You are amazing. And with that, I shall have to love you and leave you before this gets longer than the actual video itself. Be lovely to each other and good night, everybody!